today on Refined. Potato pancakes are the stars of these Sammies. There's always love sprinkled in everything that we do. Refine finds a food truck with a fresh twist on latkes. Plus, playing with heart. I'm really excited to be able to put these on and you know, play with these in the game. The Seahawks wear special cleats for a good cause. There's Dr. Fleischman's office. And everyone in the cast is on board and, and wants to do it, so we'll see. Northern Exposure fans, get ready. We head to Rosalind as rumors fly of a reboot. Seattle Refine starts now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Seattle Refine. I'm Guard Swanson. We're at the Olympic Sculpture Park in Seattle. Right off the bat, I want to say Happy Hanukkah. Tonight marks the second evening of the annual eight-day Jewish Festival of Lights. One way folks celebrate Hanukkah is by eating something called latkes, a.k.a. potato pancakes, which are cooked in oil. And a little history here. The Hanukkah holiday is based on the legend of an oil lamp that lasted for eight nights when it seemed as if there were only enough oil for one. Now there's a local food truck cooking up a new spin on this delicious food. Here's Malia Karlinski. We all know what makes a tasty sandwich, right? It's really good. There's the meat cheese, veggies, some kind of sauce, and traditionally holding it all together, the bread. But at the Napkin Friends food truck, it's bye-bye bread. Hello, latkes. What do you think about the fact that it's not served on bread, it's served on a potato pancake? I love that very much. I really do. Because you don't, you don't get that regularly. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Chef Johnny Silverberg serves up seasonally inspired latke sandwiches, along with other Jewish food faves like matzo ball soup. There's the classic combo, Italian chicken, B-L-T-G-A, and the OG. OG sandwich, we got two latkes, a couple slices of Gruyere cheese, which is essentially fancy Swiss. We got our pre-portioned four ounce house-made pastrami, Mama Lil's peppers, House-made Thousand Island, house-made horseradish cream sauce, arugula, press it, onto the machine. OG. My cameraman, John Prentice, just had to sink his teeth into their signature Sammy. I gotta say, I love latkes, I love pastrami. Never would have put them both together, but guess what? It's even better together. It's really good. Thanks to his bubby, that's Yiddish for grandma, Johnny has a heartfelt love of latkes. So Johnny, who's on the side of your food truck there? Is that your bubby by any chance? <laughs> that is. That's my mom, I'm Sylvia. And uh, how old is she? She is a very spry 90 years old. And then who's that next to her? That would be me. I never would have guessed. <laughs> you know, it's because you weren't folding your arms like this. I like, couldn't figure it out. He gave us the 411 on frying up the perfect latka. So Johnny, I have to ask you, what is a potato latka? So it's a potato pancake, traditionally served on Hanukkah. And they're super yummy. Well, we start by peeling some potatoes. Okay, so some people actually grate them, right? Correct. Some people choose to grate them and do it that way. Our latkes we make in the food processor. We got the potato. We got a little bit of diced onion, a little bit of shaved garlic. We pulse them. We don't blend them. So then I got an egg that I'm going to beat up a little bit. I'm going to fold that in there. So on this truck, since our latkes are gluten-free, then we'll add a little bit of rice flour to kind of turn it into a batter consistency. So how'd you fall in love with latkes? So my grandmother, Sylvia, and my mom making them for Hanukkah, just the smell of the kitchen, and just always look forward to it. So how did you decide to free the latke from Hanukkah? As a chef, I was always on the hunt. I love sandwiches, like my favorite thing. When I was in the kitchen, one day working, you know, chefing it up, and it was right around Hanukkah time, and I just kind of was like, well, why can't we try this? And uh, I made the OG, because I was working on the pastrami at the time, and people kind of lost their mind about it. I got my batter. And we are ready to fry. Is that an ice cream scooper? It's, yeah, it's a scooper. We use it for many things. <laughs> this is, we call this a latka scooper, actually. Those are some lovely latkes right there. So are we going to eat these things? Yeah. It tastes like Hanukkah. It tastes like Hanukkah. Yeah, Hanukkah it's like Hanukkah day. in your mouth. Whether served for Hanukkah with sour cream and applesauce or pressed into a sandwich, all of Johnny's latkes have a special ingredient. There's always love sprinkled in everything that we do. 
Malia Karlinski, Seattle Refined. To learn more about Napkin Friends, head to our website. And if there's a food truck you want us to check out, let us know. The holidays aren't just about good food, it's also about a magical experience. And for many families in the Seattle area, that means going to the Nutcracker at the Pacific Northwest Ballet. Refine snuck into the company's dress rehearsal recently at McCall Hall. Our photographer captured a taste of the magic that's now running until December 28th. For ticket information, head to our website. Of course, when it all comes down to it, the holiday season is really about giving back and helping out a cause that you feel passionate about. And Sunday, a number of Seahawks did just that with their cleats. Here's Refine's Brandon Bernstead. The lights are bright. The noise, definite. Football, a physical and mental battle played out on this day in front of some 69,000 people. And yet the Seahawks know the game they play provides a platform to do something bigger than themselves. Want proof? Just look at their feet. It's like this is something that I've been involved with and something I really like doing. So it obviously means a lot, a lot to me. Um, so I'm really, I'm really excited to be able to put these on and you know, play with these in the game. Every year, the NFL gives players a chance to showcase a charity of their choice on their shoes. For tight end Nick Vanette, the choice was an easy one. Never, ever give up. The Jesse Reese Foundation for Childhood Cancer, or NEGU for short. There's this girl, Jesse Reese, who started it. You know, she was terminally ill. You know, she felt like there wasn't much in the hospital room for her to do, to play with, and for her to take her mind off what was going on with her. Um, so she wanted to do it for other kids, you know, that, you know, dealing with the same situations that she was. Negu's mission is simple yet powerful. Help every kid fighting cancer to never, ever give up. One of the ways the foundation does this is by distributing joy jars, stuffed with toys and activities and filled with love. Whenever I go to you know, room to room in these hospitals and you know visit with these kids, you know I get a kick out of it. Just you know see, be able to brighten their day and just see how excited they are, and it's almost like they just forget what they're dealing with at the time. Nick knew he wanted his cleats to showcase the contents of a joy jar. To help make that vision a reality, he enlisted the help of Sean Vergara, a 22-year-old visual artist who specializes in custom shoes. And so he was really specific. He wanted to make it colorful. He wanted to have the toys. He wanted to have the logo. The main part to him is, is giving the children these toys and, and just seeing the smile on their faces. Sean was a hot commodity amongst the Hawks. He also designed cleats for David Moore, Rasheem Green, and J.D. McKissick. But Nick's were by far the most intricate. So there's all kinds of prep. You have to spend hours on it before you can even start to paint the colors. You know, it's a process, but it's, it's a lot of fun. Those countless hours of painstaking work paid off. So, the final product, uh, you're a fan, correct? Oh, absolutely. Um, and from hearing, a lot of people are saying this is their favorite cleat out of all of my cost, my cleats. So, it was incredible what he did. You know, it was, it was actually turned out better than what I thought or what I, how I imagined the cleat was going to look like. Um, so, he did a great job, and I'm just so fired up at how well the, the, the cleat came out. These may be just a pair of cleats, but look a little closer and you'll see the story they tell, the message they send is as important as it is profound. Never ever give up. That's what we really try to encourage and just tell them to keep fighting on. For Seattle Refined, I'm Brandon Bernstead. To learn more about my cleats, my cause, head to our website. Seattle Refined is just getting started. Fingers crossed. We'll be back here. It's a refined rewind. The stars of Northern Exposure return to Rosalind to talk about a reboot. Plus, it's like an entire tailgate party all in one glass. Refine takes a ferry ride to find the most insane Bloody Mary west of the Mississippi. Welcome back to the show. I'm Gard Swanson. Hey, do you remember the TV hit series Northern Exposure? It was filmed in Roslyn, Washington in the early 1990s, and now there are rumors of a reboot. For six seasons, Northern Exposure told the story of a young doctor and the offbeat characters he encountered living in a remote town. We're told the revival will include actor Rob Morrow, who will reprise his role as Dr. Joel Fleischman, and John Corbett may also come back. 
Refined recently took a walk down memory lane in Roslyn with two stars of the show. Oh, and look, I love it. There's Dr. Fleischman's office. Oh, Still boy. there, Joel Fleischman. Cynthia Geary and William White are best known for their quirky characters in the hit show Northern Exposure. Filmed in both Redmond and Roslyn. I played Shelly Tambo. We got bagels on the menu today. Onion, pumpernickel plain, and a what? Yali. I got moved from Los Angeles in 1990 to do this show, and at the time I was thrilled because it meant I could quit my waitress job and actually, you know, have a make a living acting. Dave the cook got a bit of a different start. Somebody saw me in the bar stool. <laughs> Asked me want to be on the show. My first line was, I quit. That's what it was. <laughs> and I thought, sheesh. And I actually thought they were going to write me out. But they didn't write him out. White appeared in 49 episodes. I can remember this one scene right here, late at night. That guy's up on top there shooting on this big snow. My kids were asking about that because we were watching it. And my daughter was like, hey, it's snowing. How did they do that? And I'm like, it's we didn't have, like, the first season was summer. We yeah. didn't have any snow. So this is KBHR. It was the fictional radio station in the fictional town of Sicily. Now for the traffic report. Maggie O'Connell just drove down Main Street too fast. 22 years after the show ended, it still has super fans, like Kurt. I first started watching the series about uh, 1993, and, it, and I remember the moment distinctly. I was late at night channel surfing, and I went by this one station, and there was a grand piano flying through the air. <laughs> What I really liked about the show was the community together, the diverse characters, and they had all kinds of ranges of personalities and quirks. And the writing was just amazing, too. Two years after, the series went off the air. So in 1997, there was the first fan festival here. And there's a, a core group of us, about uh, 10 of us, um, and we're called the Moose Fest Committee. We put on a fan festival every three years or so. The next Moose Fest is scheduled for July of next year. Since the show ended, Gary has kept herself busy raising a family on Seattle's east side. But these days, she's working on something sure to excite fans. We want to bring it back. I mean, all of these shows are coming back, and, and Darren Burroughs and I are working on a, on a, you get to hear it first, a Northern Exposure reboot. So, you know, fingers crossed. We'll be back here. We're pitching it to different streaming companies and, and have had some interest. And everyone in the cast is on board and, and wants to do it. So we'll see. I like the company. The Northern Exposure reboot is still in the works. We'll keep you posted when an air date is announced. Coming up, holiday cheer on the cheap. How to have the jolliest house on the block without busting your budget. Plus the monster Bloody Mary in Bremerton. Like us on Facebook, tweet us your story ideas, or shoot us an email telling us what you want to see on the show. You can find our inbox at hello at seattlerefined.com. Seattle Refined will be right back. Welcome back to the show. I'm Guard Swanson. This time of year, people tend to relax a bit on their diet. And our next story is perfect if you aren't keeping track of all those calories. Refine's John Prentice found a monster Bloody Mary that's a massive meal in itself. This is the Garage Bar and Grill. It's basically a neighborhood bar. We have good food. We're open 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. every day, 365 days a year. I love this place. Come here for breakfast, come here for lunch, come here for dinner. Doesn't matter. Food's always good. I love it. It's great. It's like the Space Needle of Bremerton. Everybody wants to bring their friends and family here when they come into town just for the Bloody Marys. The Garage Bar and Grill in Bremerton claims to have a Bloody Mary for every taste and appetite. This is going to be the grilled cheese Mary. Vodka, of course. We have four different soft uh, types of Bloody Mary mix. The mixes range from a little spicy to five alarm mouth on fire, which is not for the faint of heart. This Mary starts out with celery, cucumber, sausage, and asparagus. You know, the basics. That's the minimal Bloody Mary. That's the baby. That's the baby one. <laughs> then it's topped with a grilled cheese sandwich with olive eyes looking right back at you. One of the girls came up with putting little faces on it with little tongues hanging out. That gives it character. There's your grilled cheese. Just look at that thing. 
So you're not a tomato juice fan? No problem. I'm gonna make this other. This one's actually not a Bloody Mary. This one's for our non-Bloody Mary people. So it starts with a manmosa. A what? Manmosa. So it's vodka, champagne, and orange juice. Add watermelon, pineapple, strawberries, and syrup. I'm doing syrup in the cup because with this one you get a waffle. And uh, so it's basically a chicken and waffle. Chicken strip, sweet potato waffle fries, and the waffle. There's your southerner. This is the biggest Bloody Mary you make. This is the Big Mother Mary. This mother starts out with a beer pitcher of ice and vodka. Sprinkle on the basics, then add the rest. You got steak, grilled cheese, sweet potato waffle fries, chicken wings, uh, pog wild wings, skittles on a skewer. These are actual pepperoni beef straws. You can actually drink out of it. <laughs> Onion rings, sliders, candied bacon. Fold them into little bows. They look pretty. Don't forget the shrimp cocktail and cucumber shooter for help. And done. Holy mackerel, that thing's a monster. And for only $44, a bargain. Meal and drink for two or more. But I know what you're thinking. Can I get it for breakfast? Yes. You can get this all day, every day, 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. Nice. John Prentice, Seattle for fun. If you don't want to head to Bremerton, that's okay. We've listed the best Bloody Marys in Seattle on SeattleRefined.com. Just search Bloody Mary. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. I'm Gart Swanson. You know, whether you light a menorah or trim a tree, there is no doubt this is a special time of year. A lot of us will have friends and family over to celebrate the season. And if you want to decorate to impress, Seattle Goodwill has some cool ideas for do-it-yourself decor. Here's Refine's Malia Karlinski. If you're looking for simple, stunning ways to celebrate the season, Goodwill has everything you need. DIY guy Gary Foy gave us a tour of his budget-friendly ideas for trimming the tree and decking the halls. This stately and traditional tall tree is a real showstopper. The great thing about this is, is that all this was found at Goodwill. Okay. The tree, all the decor on it, and it's all under $150. So all of our stores carry all these great uh, ornaments and trees, and all you gotta do is take them home and put it together. If you like a vintage vibe, this fun and festive tree may be for you. Hey, how did you come up with the idea for this tree? Um, kitsch, right? All the fun uh, items that you can find out on our sales floor, all these great old-timey ones, handcrafted uh, balls, and you just put them on the tree. You know, you could flock it. This one came pre-flocked. Throw some lights on it. Easy peasy. It turns out red and green is not the only color scheme when it comes to tricking out the tannin bomb. Tell me about this blue and white thing you've got going. You know, it's that mid-century modern. Uh, real clean, real easy, and, you know, simple colors as well. Here's another just throw it in, grab this face off the sales floor, threw a bunch of more stuff in there, did some lights. And if you're an interfaith family, um, I grabbed one of these. It's a dreidel. Uh, put it in a mason jar, of course, glued it in, and now you've got a snow globe with a dreidel in it. That's really cute, and I love how you incorporated Christmas and Hanukkah together and just kept the color scheme the same. Yeah. And that's just for starters. This is a real traditional table that you created for us. How did you make the centerpiece? Uh, spray painted the pot, uh, threw in some rocks, trimmed these out of my yard, got these right out of my yard, put some ornaments on it. From the table to the walls, here's a clever way to add some cheer. And I want to ask you about these frames. These are really cool. I took some frames, some older frames, hit them with some spray paint, put some uh, uh, wrapping paper in the back, grabbed some ornaments, and uh, hung them up there. Get a little bow and you're all done. Really cute. Throwing a holiday soiree? Here's a great DIY activity for keeping the kiddos busy. I got one for you. Snowman hand ornament. Check it out. So all you do is you paint the you paint the hand right, and you have the have them grab it like this, and then it dries. Sharpie, and then you just add some little you know balls and a little scarf because that one's cold. You can write the date on there. And it's super simple and easy. With all these great finds, going to Goodwill is almost as good as a trip to the North Pole. That's the great thing about this you know this whole episode is everything is found at the Goodwill. So yeah, we got tons of this stuff, inexpensive, stretch your dollar. Come on down. It's like Santa's workshop around here. It's always Santa's <laughs> workshop around here. For more Goodwill DIY projects, just head to our website. All right, that's going to do it for today's show. I'm Garth Swanson. Have a good one, everybody. We'll see you next time right back here on Seattle Refined.